How you guys doing? This is Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue. Today I'm gonna tell you guys the do's and don'ts when it comes to using these pop-up pool ponds. Yes, we've been using them for, for years, but everyone on the internet is starting to use them now. And I see a lot of people making a lot of big mistakes when it comes to these pop-up pool ponds. Okay, for starters, for people getting in thinking that these pool ponds are the ultimate fix-all, well, I can assure you guys, they are not. Yes, they are pr pretty durable. They, they work for a season outside in the elements, but indoors you can maybe get a few years out of them. And I will tell you guys the best ways to get these pool ponds to go the farthest for your dollar. So for starters, when you guys set up this pool pond, please don't set it up on your bare floor. There is dirt on there. There's all kinds of, you know, gravel you might spill. There's sharp objects. So if you guys go and put beneath your pool pond just a sheet of star foam, it could, could be quarter inch, it could be half inch, it could, could be an inch. But what I like to use is this stuff right here. You get it at Home Depot. It's about three quarters of an inch thick. It works great. This thing is dual purpose. So for one, your star foam helps protect against any sort of debris that's on the ground. Now, the, the debris is liable to pop up through the bottom of your liner. Sit, say you're inside, you're cleaning the, the pond, and there's a piece of gravel sticking up beneath your liner you don't see it because it's covered up so you go you start scrubbing and uh, all of a sudden you scrub right right over the vinyl and you pop a little hole in, in your liner or you're stepping along inside the pool pond and you step on a piece of dirt and you puncture the bottom then you're stuck with holes in the bottom of your pond now when you have a hole in the bottom of your pond, you know you've got a problem. You've got a leak and you need to tend to it fast. So how we usually fix our leaks in these pool, pool ponds, which happen quite often, more often than, than you'd think. But for starters, you use the vinyl pool repair kits. These should only be used in case of emergencies with lots of water gushing out. Of course, you cut the patch to the size of the hole, actually a little bit bigger than the size of the hole. You round off all of the edges, and then you use this underwater vinyl pool repair kit. You don't want to use too, too much because you don't want to injure the, the, the fish. But as you can see, we have all different sorts of vinyl patches. We have all different kinds. We, we have stick-on. You can just peel and stick. Uh, oh, actually, that's these guys right here. They have a paper coating on the back, and you just peel them off and stick them on there. Yes, we've used flex tape. Flex tape does not really work too well. Um, you can use silicone, of course. Um, if you go to Home Depot, you get the GE1 silicone. As a matter of fact, I might have some out here. Here we go. In the handy dandy tree. So. You go, it's GE1, silicone one, all purpose, 100% silicone, and it can adhere to wet and dry surfaces. This should also be used in case of emergency, but it will heal underwater. It does work, trust me guys. So getting back to the do's and don'ts of the pool ponds. So now, now that you've got your pool ponds set that up, you've got your insulation below, you want to start getting water in it. And you think it looks barren and ugly. So you want to try and add decorations inside your pool, pool pond. Well, that's fine depending on the decorations. If you use smooth rocks or, you know, even driftwood, that can be fine. But if you go and you go to put aquarium gravel or sand in the bottom of your, your pool pond, again, you're just giving more points of entry 
to have a leak in your pool pond. So I would advise against any sort of substrate in the bottoms of your pool pond. I've done it for years and I've had leaks for years. This is the easiest way to maintain one of these pool ponds. Now diving into the mechanics of how these things should work. Now you're, you're gonna wonder, well, how do I heat this thing? I've had many people call me and went with the disastrous, you know, they stuck a heater on the bottom of the pool pond and it burnt a hole in it and there's water gushing everywhere. What do I, I do? My fish are in it, I have nowhere to put them. Well, I can tell you guys right now, you do not want to have a heater in here with no guard on it. So you want to make sure, even if you get a piece of PVC and then you just cut little slits in it and you set that on the bottom, at least that's going to give it some sort of barrier to where your heater's not sitting on a little thin piece of vinyl. So you want to make sure you protect your heaters. Next, I'm going to talk about pumps because pumps are a big issue in these pool ponds. Now when you have big fish like this, they're constantly hitting the pump, they're bashing it against the, the ground. But the most common thing that I see with these pool ponds is people pick their pumps up out of the water and of course they have a plastic bottom and they're, they're pretty sharp and people just drop their pumps back in the water. Now every time you do that, you run the risk of again, puncturing the bottom of your pool. Just be cautious of how you have your equipment in these pool ponds because you don't want to cause yourself another leak. They are not fun. All right, now, as for filtration, normally when people have pool ponds, they are on a budget and they want to run some sort of homemade filtration. So what we like to, to do, there's 55 gallon drums. You don't necessarily have to do, do this pipe off of it. You can just cut holes, drill holes in the bottom and have it pour back in like we did with these trash cans. Those are filled with bio balls. But most people, let me get up here and show you guys. You're going to want a homemade drip tray. That's just any sort of piece of flat plastic you drill a bunch of holes in so it can disperse the water. Now under it, it's nothing but foam. Here's a few layers of foam, three to be exact, three different layers of foam, and then nothing but bio balls. Because you want your bacterial fil filtration, or your biological filtration, you want your mechanical, and that's pretty much it for, for these 55 gallon drum filters. They are simple, they're easy, and they keep your pool ponds looking spectacular. Now most people like to use these pre-made holes in the pool to run that, their filtration. I've found out most of the time that's not enough filtration for the amount of fish or the size of fish that we have in here. Because just in this one pool, we have a bunch of stingrays, a big planiceps cat, there's an arapaima over there, so a black paku. So you can cut this vinyl. If you get a razor blade, you trace out the size hole that you need, and then you carefully cut it with a razor blade, you can install bulkheads. I have one here for an overflow, another one for a pump. So it is possible to make your own holes in these and make the water level where you want it or have your filter intake exactly where you want it, the size you want. So now that we're, we're done talking about the, the mechanics of these pool ponds, I'm going to start talking about the fish that you should and should not keep in here. There's not many fish that you should not keep in a pool pond, but let me tell you, there are a few. Oh, well, that male's trying try to breed with her. Um, First and foremost, do not have gar in these pool ponds. It doesn't matter how long, eventually the gars will try and feed. They'll either slap their beaks on the ground or their mouths on the ground. They'll slap against the side and they will poke holes, especially alligator gar. Now, if you guys remember, we had that four foot short body alligator gar in this pond for just a few weeks until the 58,000 was ready for fish. 
And just in that small amount of time, that gar put seven different holes in our pool pond. That is not fun to try and locate all the, these holes and try and patch all, all of them. So just try and stay away from gar as much as possible. Look at the Arapaima. He's out and cruising around. He's a three foot Arapaima gigas. Now let's go over to the 4,000 and let me show you the number one culprit for putting about one foot slices into your poles. This guy right here, the Niger catfish. These guys you should 100% not have in pool ponds. These guys have them bony sides. Now when they don't like something, say if I'm in that pool pond or in these tanks, if they're not liking me in their space, they're going to take their sides and smack my leg, smack my ankle, and I, I've actually been cut by these things before, so it's not fun. So if they can cut human flesh, they can definitely slice through the sides of these pool, pool ponds. And let me tell you, it has happened. I had to use one of these temporarily, and we had a bunch of big catfish in here. There was three or four Oxidorus nigers in here, and there was a one foot slash in these pools. It, you know, it was about 15 inches up, but a one foot, wide, uh, one foot wide slash, that water is just pouring out. That's a lot of water to be on the floor. Now, if you guys have these in your, your basements, or even better, your houses or your dining rooms, you don't want that much water on your floor. So just try and listen and learn from our mistakes here at Ohio Fish Rescue. We've been through it, so we're just trying to help you guys out when it comes to these pool ponds. Now you guys are go going to think and wonder and be like, well, I've seen the same pool pond in your guys' video forever. Yes, you've seen a pool pond in our videos forever, but this exact pond, it's from Intex. We replace this, you know, every year, every two years if we're, we're lucky. Because over time, if you guys look at the bottom, you can actually see we're getting ready close to time to replace this pool pond ourselves. You can see on each of these little whales here, there is the, the, the top vinyl coating is starting to come off and you can start seeing the threading of the pool beneath all of that. So that's just from wear and tear, deterioration. So eventually these pools are made to fail. That's why I stress to everyone, it is not a long-term fix for your fish. If you are in, you know, you need it, you need to get your fish into something quick, yes, it's easy, use it by all means. It saves you when you're in a pinch. I cannot tell you how much I love using these things because they're easy. 10 minutes, you set them up, you fill it with water, you're ready to go. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you guys with all the horror stories of you using these pool ponds because that they are great in certain circumstances. But one last thing I do wanna tell you guys is if you ever take one of these pools down, you wanna get this thing set back up within the next day or two because if you let this fill up with water and sit for a while and then you drain it and let it dry out completely, these pools are not made to be used like that and it, you know, it, it weakens them up. So if you fold it down, you're gonna have a fold in this corner that is weaker than the rest of the pool. Now, if you do what most people do, they fold in all the sides, they roll it up in a big ball and they toss it in the corner. Now, if you do that, you've got potential leak points all the way around your pool. So I just want you guys to be careful with that too. But I hope you guys learned something with the, the do's and don'ts with these pool ponds. Um, I'm just trying to, teach you guys from our mistakes because we like people to learn and not face the, the same issues that we've faced throughout the, the years. So I just want to say thank you guys for, for watching. Stay tuned. We've got some really awesome videos coming up. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe. And for all you diehards, press that bell in the corner. Talk to you guys later.